Now we'll take a look at some more functionality for Mate 5 and that's a rich text box. So we've upgraded our comments box here to support rich text. And as we discussed before, we've pared down some of the features to make it a usable list. But as you can see here, we can mark up the text with various forms of emphasis, some bold, some italic, underline, there are really quite a few things that you can do with this. We've only enabled some of the features. So for example, we'll uh, show you how we can add color, add different fonts, different font faces. As I said in the previous demo, in some cases it's difficult to uh, imagine a real important use for this, but you may come up with some. And we'll show you, you can even insert images in case what you have to say, as is often the case in the business world, can only be said with a Dilbert. Go ahead and bring one up. Pull it up and insert it into our rich text box. There are two ways to actually expand your rich text box to uh, cover more of the screen. This is a built-in feature that allows you to uh, to pop that up and. Uh, and make it fill up the screen. You can also actually use that as a modal text box, but the uh, two features don't exist side by side. If you uh, if you make a rich text box, or if you make a, a an edit box modal, so that it uh, a long edit box modal, so that it'll pop up over the top of the page, it can't be a uh, rich text one. But if it's rich text, then you have this little button available on the delivered scroll bar that makes it fill up the page until you collapse it again. Here is actually a, uh, a potential piece of value for rich text. It allows you to cut and paste some rich text from, a, for example, a Word doc is what we're using here. We've just copied that text, and then we can paste it here and you'll see that it preserves the bullets, the indents, and even the color differences. So it's easy to, uh, to maintain formatting from a document that you formatted in another editor. Okay, so we've shrunk that back down again, and at this point We've shown you most of the uh, 8.5 features. There are some of the scrollable grid features that we'll show you in a minute. For example, the actual scrolling of the scrollable grid. But we'd like to shift gears now and discuss the GTE Forms features that made solutions like these easy to use and to expand. Some of the features from GTE Forms 2.8 that you've already seen even if you didn't notice them as they occurred. First off, the uh, smart search feature. The search field that we showed you those type ahead lookups on was actually a way to attach an electronic form with a unique form ID like you see here to an individual EMPL ID. We were selecting an EMPL ID but we weren't adding one. We're actually going to add a new key record for eForm ID here that will keep track of this individual transaction. But we actually got to select an EMPL ID instead of seeing a, uh, an add search dialog box. We saw an update display dialog box that let us choose an existing key of EMPL ID. And yet 
we're actually adding a transaction here. That's a feature that comes through Smart Search. Kind of a subtle one, but it gives you a great leap ahead in usability. You'll also see here at the top a header that has a, uh, a task header and a, uh, a page header that is going to allow us to, to put instructional text at the top of the page, which is actually maintained in setup tables. So you can actually have your, your uh, functional folk maintain that text instead of technical people. We also have the comments section that allows, allows us to attach text and attach comments to any transaction that's done in GTE forms and to keep it with that transaction all the way through the review process that might be occurring. We also have universal navigation buttons here. These fields, or these buttons actually configure themselves based on the uh, context that we need to show to show just the right buttons. So you don't actually need to to build these buttons or code what happens underneath them. You can just make a setup table entry to say what sort of page this is and the buttons auto configure to provide the functionality that you need for that type of page. And then also when you use GTE forms you get access to a whole library of electronic form solutions we call it the forms library. There are lots of task specific solutions and pieces of functionality that you get free access to like our earnings distribution grid here. The reconcile feature is part of the eForms library. When you license GTE Forms, you get access to all of those, to that plus many, many, many other features, including full electronic form solutions that you can use as a template to start your own solutions in house. Now we'll go ahead and go to this and submit this form. You'll see that when we do that, we're going to come to the next step in this page, that multi-page navigation and this results page that we're now seeing are also features of GTE Forms that you get to use automatically by building this quick entry form in GTE Forms. Using the results page lets you avoid accidental resubmittal and it allows you to construct a naturally unfolding user experience. The form is now gone to the system to be processed. We've actually authorized this form. That means that it's ready to be entered into the system. So if we go to view this form now, the form that we've just created, we'll see first off that we're looking at a different view of the form now. Now we're looking at a read-only view of the form. Of course we don't want to make updates to this after it's already been submitted to the system. So GTE Forms allows us to see your quick entry information from any number of different perspectives. In this case it's a subtle one. We're just moving from, from read-write to read-only. But we can also present subsets of information to certain users, we can add additional fields for downstream approvers or for uh, core entry or core office entry people. So we have flexibility for how the form is displayed and that's another GTE forms feature.